not upset that we're going individual now. I think it just adds to the challenge. Second's still open, but first is already taken. I'll show them the check when I'm done. This is cold stuff, because he cut his finger. It's not near as bad as it looks. I mean, the blade would only let it cut you so far. After facing elimination in the last episode, only 10 divers are left in the competition in pursuit of the title of the ultimate diver. Empty scuba cylinders symbolize and seal the fate of some, while others move on to the final rounds. No longer competing as teams, the fierce competition heats up as dive bodies must now compete against one another in today's challenge to rescue the entitled turtle. Once I put the regulator in my mouth and I tried to take a breath and I knew there was no air, it was just like, it's just like getting sucker punched, like, oh boy, that's a horrible feeling and you never want to run out of air as a diver, so you know, it's just bad to be eliminated. I always wanted to learn how to dive and when I was in my mid-twenties, I had a lot of health problems and I weighed 300 pounds and I had asthma and diabetes and I thought that uh, diving and traveling the world was a dream that that I had lost that it was never going to happen for me and uh, when I had the surgery and I lost well all total 170 pounds I was 294 and a half pounds the day of my surgery when I lost all that weight diving was my uh, 100 pounds lost present to myself and so for me to have made it from almost being dead to even be here in Florida in this dive competition, I am the ultimate diver. I'm going into the elimination rounds and heading to the fire pit with the idea that I have nothing to worry about. I think great divers went on, but I think a great diver got left behind too. I really have to say we're probably the top 20 divers in the world. I was fairly confident that Jim and I had a good enough team score that we'd be going on. Tons of surprises in elimination. I, I thought good divers were going home and, and better divers are moving on. This will take everything that you've learned and push it to the extreme limits. So once I put the regulator in my mouth and I tried to take a breath and I knew there was no air, it was just like, it was just like getting sucker punched, like, oh. Boy, that's a horrible feeling and you never want to run out of air as a diver. I'm very disappointed to have been cut from the Ultimate Diver Challenge. I was really a little bit surprised at how disappointed I was. I mean, it was like a right in the pit of the stomach, you know. I was very disappointed when, when we were told we were eliminated because I wanted to stay here. Can't say my heart's not broken for not making it. I know Chris is. I'm more anger towards the system that I didn't get to continue on and just it doesn't seem fair to me. It's hard for a buddy team to be separated. It's, it's, it's a buddy sport. I hope I didn't let my partner down. My thoughts on the Ultimate Diver Challenge are that I had a very, very good time. The big question is, am I going to come back? And that remains to be seen, but I think Martin and I have been doing some talking and hopefully there won't be a family emergency next year and you'll see us back here. By the way, Palm Beach County is a great place for those of you who are aquarium divers and love crystal clear waters, nice flat seas. The place is absolutely beautiful. I 
I wish you good luck. Oh, thank you. Best of luck. May you be the ultimate diver this year. Yeah. Would you like to carry my dive gear? No, thank you. <laughs> and get you a cameo. <laughs> Divers again, congratulations on making it to the finals and welcome to Challenge 5. For today's challenge, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have a verbal dive quiz. Question number one. County with his beautiful white sand beaches is nesting ground to one of the ocean's largest and dangerous species, the loggerhead turtle. Loggerhead Marine Life Center in Palm Beach County cares for injured or displaced sea turtles. The ongoing threats to many endangered species rely on research and rehab facilities but scuba divers play a very unique role in ocean conservation. Diving protocol is to observe and never touch a turtle, allowing turtles and divers an up-close and personal encounter. Many divers volunteer our researchers, nest watchers, and participate in underwater cleanups to eliminate trash that can be ingested. This is one of the rarest turtles to find in the world. Unfortunately, all seven species of the turtles are either threatened or endangered. And the uh, population of sea turtles here in Florida. I love you. Was that for me? Or, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could stop my single existence. But anyway, the leatherback turtle is one of the hardest turtles to see worldwide. Yet every single year, several of the professional photographers are able to get pictures and video all of the video that you see in these turtle specials, which I've been involved with the last 12, all of the blue water leatherback turtles came from Palm Beach County. It's the best place in the world to find leatherback turtles in crystal clear blue water. So the nature in Palm Beach County is unsurpassed.
Today, divers will practice the skill as they are tasked with a rescue mission to save an entangled turtle. Rest assured, no real turtles are used in this challenge. Until now, divers has been competing together in teams of two as dive bodies. I don't mind if you beat me. <laughs> I don't mind if you beat me either. All right. <laughs> buddy. But the pressure is on as divers will not be scored and judged individually. I'm not upset that we're going individual now. I think it just adds to the challenge. After the elimination, you know, there's, I think, less pressure because you're into the end now. Uh, I'd be happy to see him in second place, but uh, definitely not going to be coming in first. He spends most of his time in the shop. He may have been diving longer than me. There's only room for one first place person, so. And I would almost disagree. I think after elimination, it may be got my nerves up and made it a little bit harder because I think we've whittled down to the top competitors, so. But uh, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not threatened by Tyler in this competition. Unfortunately for him. And uh, I'm, not, I'm certainly not gonna sit here and bash him. I'm just, just not my style. You know, second's still open, but first is already taken. I'll show him the check when I'm done. Now instead of just trying to be better than half of the competitors, now I have to be better than all of them. And I like my partner, but you know, I'm, I'm here to, to win this thing. It only takes that one misstep and you're in trouble. You know, I didn't come here to babysit nobody, so I'm gonna do what I can do to end up on top. As you can see, it can make you come in last or it can make you come in first. Divers, again, congratulations on making it to the finals and welcome to Challenge 5. Okay guys, so for today's challenge, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have a verbal dive quiz. You'll be asked questions that you'll have to answer. From there, swim out to the buoyancy chamber. You'll put on your gear. The judges will signal you when to start. You will have to maintain perfect buoyancy until the last diver is standing. Once you leave the buoyancy chamber, you'll navigate out to your tiles, which will have a number on them. From the number is where you will find your turtle that you must free from the water. You'll race back to shore where you will then have to measure your turtle and your time will stop. All right, guys, so who's going to win today's challenge? Right, baby. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to challenge number five of the Ultimate Diver Challenge. We're gonna do a scuba knowledge quiz for you guys today, and it'll be multiple choice. Please write down on your slates, and then you're gonna flash them to the judges, and then once they've recorded your answer, we'll move on to the next question. Question number one. What pressure will a scuba cylinder with a rated working pressure of 3,000 PSI be exposed to during a hydrostatic test? A, 5,000 PSI. B, 4,280 PSI. C, 2,250 PSI. D, 4,980 PSI. Please show the judges your answers. You need it repeated? Yeah, I'm trying to tell him to move out of the shot. Sorry. Okay, you let us do the camera stuff. You do the contestant stuff, okay? All right, question number two. An air compressor used for filling scuba cylinders operates by the principle of A, Charles' law, B, Dalton's law, C, Pascal's principle, D, Boyle's law. Everybody, please show your scores. Question number three. The horizontal boundary between water of differing salinity is defined as A, a halocline, B, a thermocline, C, a thermal zone, D, a reverse thermocline. Please show your answers to the judges. Question number four. You're gonna have to do some writing on this one, contestants. What do the acronyms stand for? Dan, D-A-N, N-A-S-E, NASI, final acronym, S-S-I. Show your answers to the judges. Can you do that on film? That really hurt my feelings. Did you get that on film? Contestant number, what contestant? Contestant number six, flip the officiating judge off. Just because I had a little giggle going. All right, let's gear up and go get wet.
like it's a little unfair because I didn't actually touch the side and I was getting called out of the tube. So I'd like to know where you, I actually touched the tube. Maybe my hair because it's long? I don't know. I'd like to know. As divers prepare to take the total rescue challenge, essential gear checks are critical. Somebody gave me a little, a little bit of a present. Finding sand in my BC pocket is a little different because we're pretty adamant about keeping our gear clean, so it was, it was a surprise. Poor planning and the rush to get things done will lead to increasing frustration and separate winners from losers. Nine and ten, okay cool. All right, everybody's here. Michael will tell, when he sees everybody's okay, right. he will then say, begin. And that's when the judges will start looking to see who touch. And you'll hear that through your headpiece. Feeling out, divers must first free dive down, grab and done gear before the challenge can begin. I gotta get a wire tie and get my, my mouthpiece put back on my, my second stage. I took a breath on her, I said, wait a second, this doesn't feel like air. This came off my mouthpiece, my mouthpiece came off my regulator. So when I put my regulator on, or my BCD on, what I did was, I went ahead and had the second stage tucked down inside so that it wouldn't be flopping around catching on to things. Got out there, swam down, got our gear. We had to wait for everyone to get ready at the buoyancy tubes. Stabilizing perfect from without touching any of the size in swallow waters with a current experience should prevail. Lining up, the judge signals, go.
find this challenge too difficult. I feel like it's a little unfair because I didn't actually touch the side and I was getting called out of the tube. So I'd like to know where you, I actually touched the tube. Maybe my hair because it's long? I don't know. I was called out of the tube, so that's kind of sucky, but I was the first one back on the beach. I guess I'm not the first one to raise my hand. Hopefully my lengths and curves of my width and everything will actually uh, be better than the first person's and maybe I'll get the points there. Always hard to have good buoyancy at, you know, 15 feet of water under the bridge where the currents are pretty decent. We went one elimination person at a time. I think I did pretty well. Um, I heard a, number, a couple numbers called for mine. Well, I think you can definitely see their buoyancy control is what it should be, and buoyancy control is so important in diving safety. And the familiarity with their equipment, the familiarity with the skills that they uh, utilize in practicing and uh, demonstrating here out here with the challenges are all very, very important to make sure that people can understand the importance of having this proper skill development. I think this challenge was one of the more enjoyable challenges. The buoyancy tube was extremely challenging. We had uh, a current or our fins, one of the two kept pushing us out the tube and we had to fight just to stay inside the tube and we stirred up a lot of sediment by doing that. I'm not sure how well I did compared to everybody else. I got tapped out, not sure how what that meant. right when we started, one of our lovely, wonderful underwater cameraman jetted past to get to the end and he created this amazing wake that totally like pushed me. <laughs> so not only the buoyancy tube went as well as it could have, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Buoyancy test was tough because you just have to stay pretty much perfectly motionless in one spot in the water. Pretty good at the buoyancy chamber. I didn't get knocked out in the beginning. Nicole is pissed. She might have won this challenge and the judges didn't count it, right? Can anybody just like pay attention to people who are getting out of the water first? Would that be would that be all that I can ask for? Because seriously. Well, I guess we'll see if this uh, does us in. If somebody wins the Ultimate Diver Challenge by like one point, then we'll be pissed. I don't mind if you beat me. <laughs> I don't mind if you beat me either. All right. Good buddy. <laughs> okay. Camera and off. we didn't cut ourselves. Yes. <laughs> you should be disqualified. The cameras are always just zoned in perfectly. I mean, they, they're, they're so damn steady. They're <laughs> it's just amazing. The, these guys, um, even their dog is great. <laughs> Rob, you realize that after we left the navigation part, you came to my turtle yeah. and you were putting your little tag on there, so I was right behind you. I was letting you, you know, go ahead and make the mistake. I wasn't going to force you to do it, you know, and you went ahead and did it, and then you moved off after you realized that you were on my turtle. Yep. So you slowed me up a little bit there, but you know, it wasn't a really timed event here, so, you know, but you found your turtle, right? I did find my turtle, Okay, yeah. that's what it's about. Okay, <laughs> good luck. Right, <laughs> I'm 
know this looks bad, but I think I did over above average. Uh, whenever I was swimming on the way back, I was a little behind uh, Tyler. And whenever he started getting about 15 yards from the edge, he got a little tired and he did take off a little bit. I think whenever I came out of the water, I was either third or fourth, but I think I did pretty good on the challenge overall. This challenge was a little bit different because we had these uh, transmitter G-diver attached to our mast so we could listen to uh, one of the head judges down there that was giving us start times as well as instructions, ultimately calling us when we had touched the buoyancy tube. So I thought that was pretty neat. I've only used this once before and that was when we were training with these in the pool. Never actually used it on a dive before. I thought it was pretty cool. It sounds a lot better when you're in the ocean than when you're in the pool because the, the walls of the pool sometimes restrict the ability for you to hear what the, your buddy's saying. First real time using in the ocean and uh, I thought it was pretty neat. We finally got to use some knives down there, or not really a knife, but this tool right here, which is pretty sharp. Free the turtle. Uh, I got a couple nicks on my finger. I know a couple other people did, so I think that made it a little exciting. Blood's always good for uh, a good time. He was number eight and I was number seven. Yeah. And we both had the same compass heading of 190. Yeah. So, and we crossed paths. So and we crossed paths where Eric wrong. went under me from my right to my left. Just before we got to the rope, it wasn't very far from our final navigation. However, I'm pretty sure I nailed it because my turtle was exactly where I hit the rope oh. and was my number. So I got him first. So I think Eric. Um, I mean, I, I was likely the one who crossed. May not have done very well. What heading I was taking. The challenge was a lot of fun. Once we completed the navigation, there was a turtle we had to cut out and release. I was pretty close. Uh, we start at start, we ran into two other teammates. That threw my bearing off. I had to wait for them guys to cross. And then I get to my turtle and I'm looking and I see number six. And I was number nine. I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, that looks like that looks like six. I can't blame nobody but myself. My own stupidity, I'll take the blame for that. I don't have a partner to. I mean I'd love to blame you. It was your, it was the camera guy's fault. Yeah, that's it. It goes back, you know, setting up your gear, knowing what you're going to have to do on the dive. Take a minute, think about how you want to do it, and then plan for that, and then go out and dive your plan. Now you notice that I was putting my PC on. I put the, uh, the cutter on that guy. I could hardly get it on. It was not this part. I tried to get it off. That wouldn't come off. 
when I went down there. It wasn't that easy. I did it. So I had to untie the turtle. I may not have been first in on the beach, but it's not a speed thing, it's an accuracy, precision. I know some people got here before me, but I know I hit my target head on, some people did not. I was pretty good in the buoyancy chamber. I didn't get knocked out in the beginning. And uh, as you heard, one person lost their knife. So it, it comes down to planning. Rob, you realize that after we left the navigation part, you came to my turtle, yeah. and you were putting your little tag on there, so I was right behind you. I was like, you know, go ahead. Make the mistake. I wasn't going to force you to do it, you know, and you went ahead and did it, and then you moved off after you realized that you were on my turtle. Yep. So you slowed me up a little bit there, but, you know, it wasn't really time to get here, so, you know, but you found your turtle, right? I did find my turtle. Yeah. Okay, that's what it's about. Okay. <laughs> As a turtle researcher with the Florida Hawksbill Project, I'm going out with Dr. Larry Wood, tagging Hawksbill turtles off of the coast of Palm Beach County. Just went back as fast as we could, hit the beach, pulled off some measurements on the, the turtle, and overall I'm, I'm happy with my performance. I think I did good. I got a little bit cut here during the challenge. I guess that's when I got a couple battle wounds here. No problem. came in behind her as well. And all three of us almost ran into the, the, the piling. piling. That, was, the that was maybe my fault. I didn't really know what side we're going on, so I just aimed for the middle, straight to the pylon. I think I'm somewhere middle of the pack, maybe uh, closer to the top. I think I was probably fourth to the table, uh, fourth finish to the turtles. So it's tough to say. We'll see how it turns out. Pretty much a good clean fight. Although I followed Aaron in, and she almost you know, let us into the, uh, the pylon here. But uh, you know, other than that, it was no problem. This is Cole's stuff because he cut his finger. So I'm taking it to the beach for him. It's not near as bad as it looks. I mean, the blade would only let it cut you so far. So the knife uh, only has blades on the inside. It's a T, and there's blades on the inside, and it just, uh, I don't know how my finger got in there. Probably when I was swimming all crazy. But you do this as a straight whip. Straight. You do the curve with this right here. Oh, got it. I think everybody, whoever hit their turtle first and cut it out first is pretty much how we came in. Other than the fact uh, Nicole and Tyler both have jets for legs. once again underwater, but up once we had the fast kick portion, he kicked my butt. By the time we got the signal 
or the, the communication through our ear to head out and begin our navigation. I couldn't hear anything. I didn't hear the start. I didn't hear any of that. So I looked in, to my left and right, saw my uh, fellow competitors taking off, assuming that their communication devices were working better than mine, and uh, I started to head off on my navigation. Right. Overall, I feel pretty good about the uh, challenge, uh, with the exception of my navigation being off a considerable amount. Uh, with the current there, I, I feel like I should have uh, made a better decision and overweighted myself to compensate for that current. But uh, I didn't. Hindsight's always 20-20, so live and learn. did all right. Uh, Aaron and I were given the same heading and across paths, so one of us was a little off. It may have been me, I was a little further from my turtle. I realized on the way back that Tyler was the only one in front of me, and on the swim, I guess I got a little tired and uh, Aaron passed me up. I know this looks bad, but I think I did over, above average. Uh, whenever I was swimming on the way back, I was a little behind uh, Tyler. And whenever he started getting about 15 yards from the edge, he, he got a little tired and he did take off a little bit. I think whenever I came out of the water, I was either third or fourth, but I think I did pretty good on the challenge overall. And that was the best challenge, I think, so far. I like the cutting the turtle out of the box. That little uh, instrument that they gave us right before we went out to uh, use to cut it out, very sharp. It was, uh, you wouldn't think it would have been as sharp as it was. As y'all can probably see uh, Cole's hand getting all cut up because he's got two left hands, I guess. I don't know. So it comes down to planning. Even the professionals, if you skip a step, you're going to miss that. And the training that we go through, even though it's repetitious, training and training and training, it only takes that one missed step and you're in trouble. As you can see, it can make you come in last or it can make you come in first. got down there to put it back on again. I'm looking for my BC because I knew that yellow bright strip was right up here next to the orange and it wasn't on. So you didn't have an eye? So I didn't have an eye. Okay. See I put mine down here and I fixed it up to where I could put a coily on it. Oh good. So that way if I dropped it, Great idea. it's still there. Uh -huh. Always teach redundancy. You don't want to lose anything. Keep it. You know, simple a couple of tie wraps, a split ring, a little coily, and you don't lose anything. You know, even even my knife over here, you know, it's still on a huh? still on a coily thing. And it's got the reach, and I can always put it back in. Oh, you almost yeah. you almost bust your bladder there, yeah. buddy. <laughs> don't get in a hurry. Take your time. Okay. Take your time. I had fun in there. It was a lot of fun. I was I think I nailed my navigation though. It was a uh, it was pretty I, I ended up right in front of my box with my turtle. Um, so I'm hoping that went well. And I think I finished pretty quickly. I was third out of the water. A freaking Tyler from Sea Experience overtook me again. So he may be the ultimate diver, but we'll see. It's all about points, so. Call. Oh, someone's struggling. I hear it. No, I got you, brother. How are you doing? Good. 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 Good.
How you doing? All good. well? I'm good. You ready to go? I'm 30 good. minutes on the beach. 30 minutes from now? Yep. Years up. Beach out here? Absolutely. See you there? All right. Thank you. Yep. Wow. This one says, do not disturb. I know that on your door it says, do not disturb. Precious. But I'm here to disturb you. Get up, diver. Good morning. How are you doing, Precious? Good morning, guys. Well, you know what? Here's your do not disturb sign. You've got 30 minutes to be at the Blue Heron Bridge. Hi, I'm Alan West. How are you doing? You ready to go diving? Yeah. You sure? Ready. You don't look it. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be great. A lot of fun. Okay. But you didn't want to be disturbed this morning, did you? No. Okay, well, it sucks to be you. Bye. Diver, wake up. Let's go. Got 30 minutes, my friend. Why you scared the crap out of me? That's what I'm supposed to do. I've been asked all week what's with my name Tortuga or Turtle. Depends on if you're in Mexico or if you're in the United States. Uh, there's a story that goes along with that. In the first year of our challenge, we almost got chased out by a hurricane. In fact, we got burned by a hurricane. And uh, some of the people that were coming didn't come and the people who were there left and there was a group of us that stayed. We were hanging out trying to figure out what to do with ourselves. Of course, we were, did the bar thing and we were like feeling good. And I said, hey, I can do an impersonation of a Tortuga. And they said, well, let's see it. So I wanna show you my impersonation of the Tortuga is where I got my name from. So Tortugas don't wear glasses, but this is my impersonation of Tortuga. Barnacles growing on this shot. Obviously drinking. <laughs> All right. Drinking. Drinking with the curry. And that's Tortuga.